All right, uh, let me say good morning to everyone. And uh, just want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for, first of all, for saving me. Uh, you know, I thank God for the day when I trusted him as my Lord and my Savior. Uh, I could never forget that day in 1992, November the 15th, 1992. Uh, I got saved uh, under a preacher. And that church was the church that was started by an American missionary. I believe that you probably would have met him before. That was Don Session. He, he started that church in Grenada. And uh, it just so happened that I, one Sunday afternoon, I decided me and three other friends, we're going to go into that church that Sunday afternoon. We just, you know, just idle little teenage boys just going down the road. And so we all agreed. We all came to the agreement that the pastor, they always pass around and invite us, you know, to you know, doing soul winning all the time. It was not done session at the time. He left already and another national took over there. And so we agreed and so we said, you know what, we're going to go in and we're going to sit to the back and then we're going to just slip out, you know, when it's coming close to end. Well, the other three of them, they beat me to the back seat. So I found myself, you know, stranded, needing to get a seat. So I went up in the middle and then, you know, he preached. And though I was very young at that time, but, you know, what he said, it sung as though somebody told him about me, you know. And I realized the need of salvation. And so I walked the island and a lady took me. She went in the back with me. And I bowed my head and I prayed. And I trusted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And since then, it has never been the same. And I just praise God for that because I didn't go there to join church, you know. As some people would say, they didn't make up their mind. I, I didn't go there. I didn't make up my mind. And, you know, he changed my life that day. And I praise God for that. Amen. And that's what he had made of me. And then we started to go to Bible school in Grenada. We had a Bible institute then, so I started to go there. And uh, then was working. And of course, between that process, I met my wife. And so, I just, you know, I felt the call of God to resign from that job. I was doing accounting. And I felt the call of God to resign from the job and to go full time. And in about four months' time, my wife and I, when I, the day that I was supposed to resign, we, we were supposed to get married in four months, you know. And so it didn't look as though, you know, that's a smart thing, you know, as far as where God is concerned. That's, you know, according to the world and the way of, the logical way of thinking, you know, you don't do it like that. But, um, you know, when you, when you got to obey God, it's not about logics and, you know, and stuff like that. It's not about, you know, simple human common sense, but it's just about what God wants you to do. And so we never had any support, don't know, I didn't even know what they called support or anything as that. But all I knew is that we were just supposed to go. My wife, she was working at the time doing teaching and still is. And, um, you know, just what she was working for, where we were renting, you know, where we were renting, just what she was working for. That is exactly what our rent was. You know, that's what our rent used to be. And um, it was very hard. Believe me, it was very, very, very difficult. But... How we got here up to this point, you know, is, is hard to say, but it's all God. Yeah. Amen? It's all God. And so we just thank God for, you know, what he has done thus far. And uh, we were able to be able to get, and then God, you know, in 2005, is like God just started to move in a great way. Uh, we were not, nothing more than probably about, about a mile away from another American missionary who had a church there and he had a building you know he got this building you know well built as a matter of fact i think the gentleman who gave him that money is uh uh to build the building there in grenada would have been uh mr anderson up in up in you know up in new york or michigan up there and so he was able to get the money and he built that church building and a place to stay and everything and then but his wife got ill so he had to come back to the states and seeing as we were so close what he did is that he gave us the building. Amen? He gave us the building, so then we ended up having a place to stay, so we didn't have to be in the rent. And, 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 and God just that, you know, just moving. And, uh, you know, so what we're trying to do is to just try to win souls and try to, you know, to get people to come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. And so we've been doing that. We had churches coming down and doing mission trips and stuff like that. Uh, just not too long ago in July, early in July, we had uh, the church there in West Virginia, Tays Valley. They came down. And uh, we had some Bible club and everything of that and, you know, some crusades at night. And so we get a chance to also to get them to go in the ocean and to enter some, you know, some just blue, clear, clear waters. You know what I mean? 
you could see into it uh, up to about 40 feet, you know, you could just see right into it. And uh, I, I know that's probably, you're curving for something like that, you know what I mean? But uh, in, in all of that beauty, you know, we are there because we know that there are people who are lost. Amen? Amen? People who are lost, and that's what we're trying to do. And so in the process of that, while we have this other church going on, and we probably might be staying there and from there trying to start churches, uh, we started... A, a, a new work, a new church there, just a little north of us, about 15 minutes away from us. Uh, we started a new work there. Uh, we had uh, several people coming to know Christ. We had the first Bible study back in July after the group left, and we had uh, uh, the first Sunday morning, we brought them down to the main church, and we had 13 of them coming down, and then we went to Bible studies again, and we had 14 of them there that night and so the Bible study continues even while I'm here they have uh, somebody who is taking charge of that and doing all of that and uh, they've been I've been asking them you know and talking with them and it's going great and the numbers are still up there and so we just thank God for what he's going to do and as we go back at the end of the month we're looking forward to start moving into Sunday morning worship service and then probably within a year or uh, not maybe just a little over a year a year and a half to two years we're looking forward to you know to have you know land and building for the church and you know to get somebody to pastor the church and then right after that we're going to move into a different area again and start a next work our objective is to try to see as much as possible how we are able to win grenada for jesus amen, amen. we're not trying to build kingdoms for ourselves or trying to make a name for ourselves but what we're trying to do is to see that lost men come to know Christ. As I said, the Great Commission, and you know, to have the lingering effects of the last sermon of Jesus, you know, to go out and to win souls. And when one person would come to know Christ, I mean, you know, what a difference, what a difference that makes on the face of eternity. Amen? Uh, Grenada is not really a big place. We have 110,000 people and uh, a person's there, but the whole island is in a village form, and so when you go into that village, you know, it's, you know what I mean? You're there. Some villages might probably have 500 pe persons, you know. Certain areas might have 1,000 or about 1,500. And that area where we are now, there are no fundamental, uh, you know, work, you know, Bible work there, let alone, to say, independent Baptist. There is nothing like that there in that new area. And so we, where we are, there is none there. Only we alone that's there at Victory Baptist Temple. And then where we just started... That other work, there is no other work there. And so that's what we're trying to do as much as possible, in as much place as possible, is to plant fundamental independent Baptist churches so that people can hear the gospel. Amen? Yeah. They can hear the gospel, not watered down, but they can hear it in earnest and they can hear it in truth. Yeah. And so that's what we're trying to do. And so uh, as we trying to continue to raise support that we'll be able to go with the gospel, you know, and as much as we can raise support, of course, is the more that we are, you know, we are able to do. And uh, we, you know, we ask you to pray for us to help us hold the ropes there in Grenada. Amen? And so that's what we are doing. And uh, we also, I'm also involved in our Bible school. We have a Bible, the Bible Institute. I'm also, I'm also involved there uh, teaching all the other, some of the other men on the island. They also teach at that Bible school. And so we're looking forward to seeing God, you know, trying to do something great with, you know, with the young people. And um, we want to make them as, as equipped as we possibly can, amen, so that they will, too will be able to go. Like I said, we are starting churches. There are other men who are starting churches in other places on the other side of the island. And so we need individuals, of course, to be able to take up this work. And so that's what our Bible Institute is all about, trying to train young people that will be able to, you know, be, feel the burden, whether they start doing that out of, a call of God or out of necessity, seeing the need and, you know, and going. But we're trying to train them so that we will be ready in Grenada and be able to, you know, to, to just go out and win souls for the honor and for the glory of God. Amen? Amen? And so we do ask you to pray for us regarding our support and pray for us as we go. And if not anything, just pray that as much people could come to know Christ. Amen? Because that's what we want. We want a harvest of souls. Amen? Yeah. We want to harvest our soul because I'll tell you what, if there is harvest of souls, man, I'll tell you what, you'll forget that you didn't eat, you'll forget that you did, you're hungry, you'll forget about everything just, just to see people come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And um, that's the burden that we have for our island and for our people and, of course, for the world as a whole to see as much people come to know Christ. As Paul says, you know, Paul says in the book of Romans, he said that, you know, he's almost saying that if it is possible that he could have lost his salvation, 
so that to see all Israel be saved, he would have done it. Amen? If it was only possible, he would have done it. And so that's a, that's a burden. He says he, his heart is heavy. Amen? And so my heart is heavy for my people to see them come to know Jesus as Lord and as Savior. Amen? So you just do pray first in regards to that. Amen? Pray first. Amen? And, um, all right, let me just share with you here a little bit here in First uh, Samuel's in First Samuel's in chapters number seventeen. Uh, we know that famous uh, story here with uh, David and Goliath, and uh, I'll try to share one point here in First Samuel's chapters number seventeen. First Samuel's chapters numbers seventeen. All right, we could all stand for the honor of the reading of the Word of God in 1 Samuel in chapters number 17. And uh, we'll read a few verses here from verse number 2. Let's just take from verse number 2 going down. And the Bible says, And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elam and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines uh, stood on the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubic and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he had an arm, uh, sorry, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And uh, the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And uh, he had a uh, grave of brass upon his leg, and target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a wave beam, and his spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went out, uh, went before him, and he stood and cried unto the army of Is the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not? Am I am not? I a Philistine, and ye your servants of to Saul? Choose you a man from choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then uh, will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, uh, and then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine says, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that he may fight together. That we may fight together. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word. And Lord, we pray, may you help us. And Father, Lord, may your word just bless our hearts today. Help us, Lord, and minister God to us, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so you may be seated. And so, as I know that uh, uh, this is very well known and very well famous uh, passage of scripture, of course, the story with David and Goliath. Even when I was not saved, I knew about this story. Amen. <laughs> Even when I was not saved, I knew about this story here with David and Goliath. And so this morning we want to speak briefly here on the subject, stepping out in the valley. Stepping out in the valley. Notice that the Bible says in verse number 2 and going down, it said that the army of Israel and the Philistines, that they were on, they were, they, they were, there was a valley between both of them and their boat was on one, each on a mountain. And so if this battle is going to be fought, they cannot stay in the mountains. If this battle is ever going to get on the way, they got to step out in the valley. They got to step out in the valley. And so the valley is the place of, of course, where there will be some measure of, you know, some confrontation or, you know, some, you know, that's where the, the conflicts will be settled. It need to be settled out there in the valley. Too many times, sometimes, you know, to, as Christians and, you know, as people of God, sometimes we, we just love staying up there in the mountains. Amen? We just love sitting back in the back seat of the church. And when it comes to going out and soul winning, we don't really want to step out in the valley. Amen? But I want you to know, friend, that if we're going to win people for, for, for Jesus Christ, if we're going to win this world out there, and we're going to ever make an impression up on them, we got to get out of the mountains and we got to step out in the valley valley. Amen? Because that's where the battle, as they say, the old saying, that's where the rubber is going to ever meet the road when we step out 
in the valley. And so the children of Israel here, they had to step out in the valley. But uh, for some reason or the other, they were somewhat the other, they, they, they had a problem. They, were, they find it difficult to step out in the valley. And uh, the point that we want to make here this morning, of course, here, it, one of the reasons why, of course, there are several reasons why, but one of the reasons why that they did not want to step out, that they did not step out in the valley is because of the opposing voice. Because of the opposing voice. Now, first of all, uh, one of the ideas, of course, also, they, they saw Goliath because of what they saw, right? They saw something because of the, the, the vision. And what they saw, of course, hindered them from wanting to come out in the valley because when they saw Goliath and they look at the size of Goliath, they look at the size of that giant, he looked very intimidating. And so as a result of what the, the vision, what they, you know, what they saw, they found it very difficult. I mean, sometimes Christians, you see the kind of insult people get when they go out on soul winning. Sometimes, you know, you see the kind of, you know, the kind of uh, 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 door slamming in people's face. And so when you see those things, I'll tell you what, sometimes you're hindered and you don't want to step out. Man, you don't want to step out. Sometimes, you know, sometimes God might be calling a young man to preach or he might be calling somebody to go on the mission field. But I'll tell you what, sometimes you probably look at some video and you see what's taking place on the mission field. And because of your vision, because of what you, you saw through those eye gates, for some reason or the other, you're beginning to find it difficult to step out in the valley. But I'll tell you what, you would never be able to fulfill the call of God on your life unless you step out in the valley. Peter, of course, he told Jesus, he said, listen, he said, Master, when Jesus was telling him about, his, about, uh, about him going to die on the cross, Peter said, no, Master, no. And he tried to hold back Jesus, and Jesus looked at him and he said, listen, he said, get the hands Satan. He called Peter Satan because of the fact that Peter was trying to hinder him from going to his cross. And I'll tell you what, people, anytime you, you're hindered, anytime you refuse to go to your cross or to take up your cross, it means, therefore, that you're also refusing your crown. That's what you're leaving behind also. You're refusing your crown. And I'll tell you what, don't be disturbed by what you see. Don't you ever be disturbed by what you see. But the children of Israel, the point we want to emphasize on is because of the, not just, not, not because of, you know, the, the vision, but just because really of the voices. We want to see of the voices that took place here. Now, Goliath was a big guy, and uh, we said that that disturbed them. But when they, you know, when they, when they begin to hear this great mighty man speak, that begins to disturb them even further. It's one thing to see somebody who is real big or something like that, but then it's another thing to start hearing their voices. Amen? To start hearing their voices. I'll tell you what, sometimes you may see a real big person that might be looking really big, but if they got a baby voice, it's like, oh man, you know what I mean? You know? I mean, you think, oh, he's just, a, you know, man, he's just big, but, you know, no voice at all or anything as that. But Goliath had a voice to go with the image that he had. And that further intimidate them. Now, look here down in, uh, as we begin to look here in verse, uh, look in here in verse number nine. In verse number nine. Uh, verse number eight, sorry. I'm sorry. Verse number eight. The Bible says, And he stood and cried unto the army of Israel and said unto them. So he begins to speak. He said unto them, Why are ye come down out to, why, why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye a servant to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to talk with me, then will uh, we be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then he shall be our servant and serve us. And the Philistine said, And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel. And so the opposing voices, one of the first opposing voices that they heard why they did not want to come out in the valley is because of the fact it was the voice of defiance. Right, right, yeah. The voice of defiance. And so Goliath said, listen, I defy the army 
of the living God. And sometimes we are faced with a voice of defiance. Amen? Where it seems as though, you know, like, as though that somebody is telling us, listen, you would never make it. You could never prevail. Sometimes you go to somebody and you go to an individual and you begin to speak to them about Christ and they will say to you, listen, I don't want to hear nothing about Jesus. I don't want to hear nothing about church. I, you know, I don't want to hear nothing about this stuff. I don't want to hear nothing about that. And as a result of that, you start telling yourself, listen, you know what? I'm not going to never step out there again and try to win somebody to Jesus because I'm, listen, I am moved by the voice of defiance. Every person that you encounter, every person who you speak to about Jesus would not want to accept them. Sometimes at the beginning, but I want you to know, with persistence, you could prevail. Because I'll tell you what, it's not we that saving people, it is Jesus. Amen? The gospel, the Bible says, the power of God unto salvation. And so we should not be disturbed by the voice of defiance. Sometimes when the devil come in your head and say, listen, you would never win that person. you just wasting your time outside here. you just, listen, you just wasting precious time. you just wasting money sending to missionaries. You are wasting time. I want you to know, do not be disturbed by the voice of defiance. And because of the voice of defiance, they say, you know what? I'm not stepping out there. Come on, listen to this man. Look at his, look at his size and still at, his, at the tone. Listen to the words, what he's saying. He's saying, hey, as great as our God is, as mighty as our God is, he's defined that God and that army. He's saying, Israel, you know what? You say that you have a God, but I am here today to show you that I am the greatest. I am the greatest. And sometimes the devil steps in your way and try to make you feel that he is the greatest. See? Try to make you feel as though he is the greatest. And so the result of that, the voice of defiance disturbs us and stops us. And here Israel, they were not going to come out because of the voice of defiance. But if we ought to stay, thank God, the day that Don Session came to Grenada, if he had listened to the voice of defiance, I don't know where I would have been today. I may have never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I would have never met you. I would have never met your preacher. I would have never been able to hear preaching. I would have never been able to, to be in the company and to hear the word of God so I can grow up in the things of God and I can be what I am today. But somebody decided, you know what? The voice of defiance would not stop me. I'm going to go with the gospel. I'm going to step out in the valley. I'm going to leave the comfort of America. I'm going to leave all the padded pews and the air condition. I'm going to leave all the comfort. I'm going to leave the McDonald's. I'm going to leave everything. I'm going to leave all the drive through bank. I'm going to leave all the laziness. I'm going to leave all the comfort. And I'm going to step out in the valley. Because you see, where they were in that mountain, man, I'll tell you what, there are lots of shade up there. Everybody's cool. <laughs> you know, man? Nobody wants to step out. The voice of defiance. Not only did I see the voice of defiance is what stopped them from coming out or stepping out in the valley, but also in verse number 11, the Bible says, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were what? Dismayed. Voice of dismay. I'll tell you what, they were among themselves, and I'll tell you what, they were totally deflated. Sometimes people say things to you that it deflates you. I mean, it just takes out all the wind in you. And I'll tell you what, there is nothing that could happen to get you sailing. You're totally deflated. Things happen and you get totally deflated. People criticize your move. You know, people, you know, just probably didn't even pay attention to you. When, when you stand up and give a testimony... And nobody shouted when you said, listen, you know what? That I went out on soul winning and that person trusted Jesus. And for some reason or the other, that got to you. And he deflated. You thinking, you know what? Man, you win somebody to Christ. When you come back, everybody's going to be happy. Everybody's going to be shouting. Everybody's going to be jumping. Everybody's going to be doing that. And you get totally deflated. Totally, totally deflated. The voice of dismay. I can remember once I've, been, I've heard... Uh, Dr. Jack Hyatt's preaching, he said when he got saved, that night when he got saved, not one person came across to him and shake his hand and 
say, young man, what you did was great, and give him a word of encouragement. And he said he just standing there and nobody, nobody, almost as if nobody noticed Jack Hiles got saved. See? And I'll tell you what, you know, you probably will think, you know, and, you know, in himself, you know, he's just there. And I'll tell you what, sometimes things happen. And based on what happened, like I said, we get deflated. And so the, Philist, the, the Israel, the army of Israel here, they were totally deflated. They, you know, they, they, they heard that voice and they got dismayed, as the Bible said. And so as a result of that, they say, you know what, <laughs> man, uh, this man is defined. And now, you know, we, we are just totally out of it. I, I'm not stepping out there. I could imagine the captain probably looking for somebody to step out. And every, every man's head is down. Every man's head is down. Just down. In verse number 16, the Bible says, And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented, uh, and presented himself 40 days. And so 40 days they are there and nobody is stepping out in the valley. Because they're dismayed. Because they're dismayed. They're, listen, he could be defeated. He has a point of penetration. But because nobody is stepping out, he's not, listen, nobody is discovering that this Philistine could go to the ground. And I'll tell you what, people, there are people out there who need Jesus. Amen. There are people who will, they, listen, they want to hear the gospel. Right. You probably might go to 30 houses and probably out of this 30, maybe only one that will is be really willing to listen to you. But you would never know, you would never find that one unless if you decide, I'm going to step out and I'm going to go out there in the valley and I'm going to confront people. I'm going to get involved in that aggressive soul winning thing and I'm going to tell people about Jesus. I'm going to just preach to them and I'm going to let the Holy Spirit of God do the rest. But for I'll tell you what, you are the instrument, we are the vessels. And I'll tell you, if we are dismayed, people will die and go to hell. Because the Bible says, listen, if the gospel is hidden, it is hidden from them that are lost. Because of the voice of dismay. They're not going nowhere. Look in verse number 20. The Bible says, and David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with, his, with the keeper and took <clears throat> and went as Jesse had commanded, he, as Jesse has commanded him, and he came to the trench <clears throat> as the host was going forth to fight and shout and shouted for the battle. Now, when David came, the Bible says here, an important word here, the Bible says that he met them in the trench. Yeah. See what I mean? He met them in the trench. I'll tell you what, if you're going to fight any battle, if you're going to go forward, you can't stay in trenches. Right. See what I mean? You cannot entrench yourself. Yeah. Well, you're entrenching yourself with all different things. Well, you know what? Based on who I am, I can't take this insult. So you entrench yourself. And so you're not going to go forward. You're not going to step out in that valley because you're already entrenched. Well, you know what? I've heard stories from missionaries, and I can tell you what, man. I love God and everything, and I, I probably would, you know, would give to mission, but I would never go and win souls. You entrench yourself. With all different kinds of views and opinions. Yeah. You entrench yourself with doubts. You entrench yourself with so much different things. And as a result of that, there is no progress. So 40 days. And David came after and he met them. And he met them in trenches. Right. Right. Just entrench himself. I tell you what, there might be people who probably been in churches for God's sake for 30 and 40 years. And never witnessed to somebody. Because for all those years, they entrenched themselves. Good, good. They, they, listen, day after day, will, time after time will pass. The preacher will preach hard on it, but they're living in trenches. For years upon years. Because why? They're dismayed. And they're going to stay in trenches. Quickly, not only that we find that the voice of defiance is what hindered them. Not only that we find that the voice of dismay is what, uh, you know, hindered them. But also, if we look down here in verse numbers, uh, let, let's take from verse numbers uh, uh, um, uh, 37. Verse number 37, the Bible says here, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the power of the lion and out of the power 
of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this, of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his arm, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David guarded his sword upon him on his armor, and he attempted to go, for, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Now David was going to, David did something here that probably, he probably, he's possibly, he could have probably lost his life for that. Right. He's refusing the king's armor. Right. He probably could have lost his life for that. Right. But David said, listen, I have not proven this. I have not proven this. You know, I've been sitting there and I look back there and he says here, only a 1611 King James is used in preaching and teaching. Amen. That has been proven. Amen. So I mean? And so I tell you what, friend, you see what? This book, it has been proven. Amen. And because it has been proven that he's able to do the work, that's what he, that, friend, I tell you what, there might be many things that might be out there, and many probably, you know, I've seen people trying good works, I've seen people trying religion, but those things don't work. And I tell you what, if the Bible works, then use it. Amen. 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 If it works, then therefore use it. Amen? Use it. And so David said, I have not proven this, but that's not the, that's not the point. That's a point within another point that we're not sharing. But in verse numbers, are, uh, verse numbers are 40, the Bible says, And he took his staff in his hand and chose him uh, five stones, five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script, and his... And and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bared the shield went before him. And, the Philist and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and rude and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? That thou comest to me with staff. And the Philistine cursed David by his God. Notice that here, that one of the things, of course, sometimes the voice that we would hear, that sometimes would hinder us, but it did not hinder David, is a voice of disdain. Is a voice of disdain. What are you talking about, that church on top of the hill? You're in no church. Amen? I mean, your pastor is nobody. I mean, what you're doing there, you're just wasting time. You know what I mean? You all, so all, you all are this kind of fundamental people, you know, just King James only and all of that. I'll tell you what, you would never be able to pull in the crowd in that way. Mm. I mean, I'll tell you what, you all are haters. You all are, you know, you, you all call yourself fundamentalists. But listen, you are, you are haters. You are all, you know, you all this kind of bad name. You are not politically correct. They would call you all kind of names that is not politically correct. They would disdain you. You would never be able to be on the mainstream. Something got to be wrong with you for going to that particular church and to listen to that kind of preaching. People will disdain you. And when, listen, I'll tell you what, Goliath, in all what he has said, he had disdained Israel. And he disdained their God. And as a result of that, none of them was willing to step out. But David said, you know what? Despite the fact of the defiance, yeah. despite the fact of the dismay, yeah. despite the fact of the disdain, I am stepping out in the yeah. valley. And on that day, it took only one man, a little teenage boy, to yeah. step out in the valley and to see that he defeats the enemy. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. In spite of the disdain yeah. and people treat you as though you're not worthy or you're not nothing just because you preach the gospel just because you attend a fundamental independent Baptist church just because you believe in soul winning yeah. and people look down on you just because you believe in soul winning just because you believe that listen you need to share the gospel just because you want to fulfill the great commission yeah. just because you want to do something for Jesus yeah, they disdain you right. and when you get disdain you get that voice of disdain yeah. but I tell you you see me I'm not stepping out there yeah. I'm not stepping out there because nobody likes to get their pride hurt amen nobody wants to be you know be embarrassed yeah. nobody wants to be looked yeah. down upon right. but you know what Christ says yeah. he must increase and we must decrease. Right, yeah, right. So even if somebody told you that you're nothing, 
you, as a Christian, you're supposed to know that, hey, you think I'm nothing, but I'm everything. Man, I'm sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, even as I stand before you. Man, I'm looking forward to the day that my Savior is going to come back and he's going to take me out of this world. I, I, I'm looking forward to spending eternity with him. I'm looking forward. To, listen, you are everything. And even though you get the voice of disdain, understand as a Christian, you have nothing to lose but all to gain. All to gain. And so David said, you know what? What is important here? It's a sea that the name of God and the army of God is not disdain. Amen. This army, this church that knows Jesus as Lord and Savior, we got to go forth with the gospel. Right, right. We got to make the devil know that he is defeated. Yeah. You got to make the devil know that, listen, hey, he is defeated and there is no way at all he'll be able to conquer. The Bible gives us, the, it already tells us that the gates of hell right, right. will not prevail yeah. will not prevail yeah. and so even if somebody says something that dumped in your heart or it seems as though you get deflated understand you know what hey i need to look up because yeah. god is yeah. still on the throne yeah. Yeah. he's still on the throne sure and he's still in the saving business okay. he's still in the saving business yes, sir. lastly as we look here Good. that understand that despite you know of the voices David was the only one that recognized that hey in all of these voices there is another voice that I'm hearing yeah. because of the God who I'm serving David. look at it here in verse number 44 the Bible and, and going down the Bible says and the Philistine uh, said to David come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field and then said David to the Philistine thou comest to me with swords and with spear and with shield but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the army of Israel whom thou defied this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand I'll tell you what when you fight that those voices understand that the voice of deliverance is right there yeah. The voice of deliverance is right there. Because, friend, I'll tell you what. If we fight the voice of defiance and we go out and we win souls, I'll tell you, there's, these are people that get delivered from hell. Amen. Right. Man, these are people that get delivered from hell. Amen. Sometimes, you know, in just an ordinary situation in your life, sometimes you face adverse situation. But understand, listen, God always has the voice of deliverance. Amen. He has the way out. Amen. In every situation, he got the way out. And David understood and David knew that, hey, I'm going to step out in this valley. Because in spite of how big this giant is, in spite of how difficult it seems as though this whole situation is, I'll tell you what, God will deliver. Amen. And this day he said, listen, he will, give you, he will give you to me. And I will chop your head off, Goliath. And I will feed, and listen, and I will feed your bodies to the falls of the air. And Goliath was really upset. But praise God. God is a delivering Amen. God. Amen. He's a God that delivers. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar recognized. Nebuchadnezzar said there is no other God right. that can deliver right. after the sort of the God of Sedrach, Meshach, yes. and Abednego. Amen. Amen. Defiance take place. This may take place. This then take place. But praise God. He has the last voice. And that voice is the voice of deliverance. Amen. This world will despise us. This world will say all manner of things against us. This world will do whatever they want to do. But one day, that trumpet will sound. Praise God. And when that trumpet sung, we're going to hear a different voice. Amen. Praise God. It will be the voice of deliverance from the devil, from sin, from hell. God will deliver us. Amen. The voice of deliverance. Amen. Friend, we need to step out yeah. in the valley. Because this battle needs to be fought. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The army is already in array. Right. One on this mountain and one on the other mountain. Right. What is missing is the confrontations yeah. in the valley. Yeah. Yeah. That's what is missing. Yeah. The devil is on one side. And we on one side. But I'll tell you what, he's already advanced down in the valley. He's ready. But we need to go down there and step out in the valley. Who is going to be?